This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me in Bermuda, where I'm staying at the Princess Hotel in Hamilton. I've got an exciting video for you today because today is the day of the car show, the Bermuda Charge event on Front Street. I mentioned this car show to you in previous videos, but my BMW Z3, which I bought in Cheshire and then shipped to Bermuda, is gonna take pride of place. It's being auctioned off today at 4.30. So one lucky person out there is gonna get a very nice 26,000 mile BMW Z3. I'm quite excited about it. In addition to that, there are a load of classic cars to see, classic motorcycles, there's a powerboat race in Hamilton Harbour, the jet skis, all sorts of stuff to see. So it should be quite a good event. This, I think, is the fifth year that Bermuda Charge have ran this event, and it's Bermuda's only motor show, so it should be quite a good turnout. The weather's beautiful, if anything, it's a little bit too hot, actually, but there we go. I dropped off the Z3 there this morning by the flagpole on Front Street, and everyone was setting up the stalls, and there's loads of stuff to see and do. So today, I thought I'd take you guys along for the journey and show you what it's all about. I'll see you there. A lot of you have been asking me to tell you a bit more about Bermuda, and while it's known for its pink sand beaches and crystal clear waters, it also has a rich history that adds to its charm. Many people wrongly assume that it's in the Caribbean, and it isn't, it's actually in the middle of the Atlantic. It's in its own little bubble really, the nearest land is South Carolina hundreds of miles away to the west. One fascinating piece of history is right here where I'm staying, the Hamilton Princess Hotel. This grand old hotel has been a luxurious getaway for travellers since the early 1900s. With its majestic colonial architecture and prime location overlooking the stunning Hamilton Harbour, it quickly became a hotspot for dignitaries and celebrities. But there's more to this hotel than just its beauty. Now I'm a big history geek, so I found this fascinating. So let me tell you this, during World War II, the Hamilton Princess transformed into a crucial intelligence centre, a bit like Bletchley Park. The British intelligence services set up shop here, capitalising on Bermuda's strategic Atlantic position. It was here that Allied codebreakers worked to intercept and decipher Axis communications. This operation was vital, contributing significantly to the Allied forces' success in the Atlantic. The operations were so secretive that much of the hotel staff were unaware of the building's strategic importance. Today, this Fairmont Hotel stands not only as a testament to Bermuda's luxury hospitality, but also as a living monument to its pivotal role in global history. Right, we're nearly there now, and that's the good thing about staying at the Hamilton Princess. You're so close to town. It means that every night you can have a few beers and then not worry about getting a taxi back. But if you take a look over there, over my shoulder, is the Royal Bermuda Yacht Club. Now, when I arrived three or four days ago, that marina down there, that harbour, was just full of sailboats. And it was the Newport to Bermuda sailboat race. And the atmosphere was buzzing at the Yacht Club. They had DJs on and food and all that sort of stuff. And now they're obviously starting to head back to North America. Anyway, I just thought I'd show that to you. We're about three minutes away, so follow me. Before we continue with the Motorfest video, I just need to say a quick thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. And today, we're gonna to be making some sweet, sticky beef noodles. Right. HelloFresh is a meal kit service that makes cooking at home easy, fun, and delicious. With fresh ingredients and simple recipes delivered right to your door, it fits perfectly into my busy schedule. HelloFresh has been a game changer for me. Whether I'm busy filming or working on cars, having delicious home-cooked meals ready to go has made my life so much easier. I highly recommend it to anyone looking for convenience without compromising on quality. If you're caught up in the hassle of daily routine, as I often am, let HelloFresh handle the meal prep with easy step-by-step -step recipes. It really is like painting by numbers. You can cook up delicious meals in 25 minutes or less with the tasty recipes, or go super quick in just 15 minutes. I found it's perfect for those days when you're just short on time but still want a tasty meal. And if you're like me, always on the lookout for more fresh quality ingredients in your meals, HelloFresh is a fantastic choice. It's a simple way to bring better eating habits into a busy lifestyle. Let me tell you about this amazing offer. All you need to do is use my code HPAF4L, that's HPAF4L, and click the link below in the video description, and you'll get 60% off your first box, plus 20% off the next two months, plus free desserts for life. One of the best parts about HelloFresh is its flexibility. You can pause, cancel, or change the delivery address whenever you want, so it works around your schedule, not the other way around. Oh, and don't forget to scan the QR code on screen for quick access to this deal. So thanks HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. And don't forget to use my promo code HPAF4L for 60% off your first box, 20% off the next two boxes, plus free desserts for life. Right, back to Motorfest.
Right, well this is the start of Front Street then by the birdcage. Let's go and look at the classics then. Over there, by the way, we've got a Bentley Flying Spur. That's a four litre V8. That produces around 500 horsepower, which means it'll do 0 to 60 in under five seconds. Which seems a bit silly, really, given Bermuda's low speed limit of just 22 miles an hour. Anyway, it's a beautiful car, nonetheless. But, you're not allowed that kind of thing in Bermuda, but it's registered as a, as a limousine, as a taxi. So that's how they, uh, that's how it's used. Now this is way before my time, but I think that's a Morris Minor, is it? Morris Thousand? Uh, oh, Minor, there we go. The Morris Minor ran from 1948 to 1971, and over 1.6 million of them were made. It's estimated that there are less than 50,000 of them remaining on the roads, so it just means that any sighting of them, especially one here in Bermuda, is quite a rare thing. That's a cool Defender. I've actually seen this on the roads before. It's obviously used for like commercial purposes. Let's look at this Mini then, so. I think this is quite a late one. The original Mini ran from 1959 all the way to the year 2000, and it's a design icon. It was designed by Alec Isagonis and John Shepard, and it used to be a regular sight on the UK roads, but nowadays you just don't see that many of them. Oh, that'd be handy here as well. It's got the, uh, the canvas roof. Now, if any of you have watched White Gold, this is what the main guy is driving at the start. And then at some point, it's got some rude door bins down it, but that's a Triumph TR7 and it's immaculate. Now that isn't on classic plates, that's on regular plates, as is the Mini. So that can be used every day. It's only on the classic stuff that you can only use it on Saturdays and public holidays and Sundays, of course. We've got some MGBs here. They've never done much for me, but they do look cool, don't they? But it does have that timeless roadster look, and it is quintessentially British. You know, actually it would be perfect for cruising around this island. Ah, now this is cool. That's a, a 1977 Toyota Celica. But it looks like an American muscle car, doesn't it? Well, that's no accident. This model was actually inspired by the design trends of American muscle cars at the time. What's really cool is that despite its muscle car looks, the Celica was praised for its balance and handling, thanks to its lighter, compact design. It's like getting the best of both worlds, muscle car styling with sports car agility. Apologies for the noise, by the way. Then over here, we've got an Austin A55. I guess that's 50s, is it? And then this, I saw this yesterday. I posted it on Instagram. It's a 1960s Porsche 912. I don't know much about it apart from I want it immediately. Over here then, I think these are kit cars. They're badged as Mercedes, but I don't think they are. I'm not sure what they're based on. Kit cars are pretty popular in places like Bermuda, where car imports can be expensive due to high taxes. Building a car from a kit can be a more affordable way to enjoy something special without the hefty import fees. Plus, they allow car enthusiasts to customise it to their liking, which is a big draw here where options might be limited. That's the brand new Kia Picanto, by the way, which might not excite an awful lot of people, but it's a really good car, that. And I've got a, a review booked with one in the next couple of weeks. So, I shall tell you more about it then. I thought that was a, uh, a funky cat, but it isn't. It's a Wuling, some sort of Chinese EV. As we wander down Front Street, it was just great to see the array of vintage and modern classics. And the atmosphere was really good. Everyone was friendly, as they always are, but it was good to see people indulging in these passions. And every corner brought another surprise, like this wacky custom Suzuki Swift, decked out in vibrant colours and outrageous mods that definitely turn heads. It almost looked like a cartoon car, but as much fun as it was to explore these unique rides, it was time for the main event. My BMW Z3, which has travelled a staggering 3,500 miles all the way from Liverpool to sunny Bermuda, was ready to take the spotlight. And in a rather embarrassing twist, I had to perform the world's shortest drive to manoeuvre the Z3 right in front of the auction stage. And while you can't hear it, the iconic Bond theme was playing in the background, adding a touch of cinematic flair to the scene. Though I'll have to leave that to your imagination to avoid a copyright strike. Don't take it too far, we gotta sell it first, Matt. Thank you, you drove it beautifully. Welcome, welcome everyone. So here we are with the live auction for the BMW Z3 1999 Roadster. Keita, what do you think? Would you like to drive this car around on the weekends? Oh, you would love to, yes! 
The auction atmosphere was charged with anticipation. At first it was a tense wait. Moments stretched as we looked around the audience waiting for the first bidder to make a move. It took a while but eventually someone threw the paddle up, breaking the ice. And I see $28,000 Anyway, soon after that, a second bidder joined the fray, ramping up the excitement. This is what you need in an auction like this. Lots of people competing with one another. After a series of bids, the gavel finally came down. My BMW Z3, the car that travelled all the way from Nutsford to Bermuda, was sold for $30,000. $30,000 going once, $30,000 going twice, sold to the gentleman in the sexy aviator glasses! Now, $30,000 might sound steep for a Z3, even one as pristine as this, but here's the thing, Bermuda is such a unique place. The shipping costs to get anything to the island are high, not to mention the taxes which sit at around 150%, plus the fees for imported vehicles, plus the tests, plus the license, plus the insurance, all that sort of stuff. So the actual total was quite substantial. These factors inflate the cost of owning a car like the Z3 here, far beyond what you might expect stateside or in Europe. So while you might think the selling price was high, it only left a very small profit, considering all the expenses and time involved. It's a tough market, but thankfully the unique charm and excellent condition of this particular Z3 made it a desirable piece, so we managed to just pull through in the green. Thank you so much, Bermuda. Look forward to seeing this car out on our roads, beautifying our beautiful island. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the Bermuda car culture. Apologies for all the voiceover, but it was just really loud, so it was the only thing I could do, really. Granted, there weren't that many cars, because there still aren't that many classics on the island, but there have been some interesting ones. I think my favourite car from today was the old yellow Porsche 912, but it's still interesting in seeing things like the old Mini and the TR7 and the Bentley. They're just not cars that I'm used to seeing every day. So I think that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. I'll leave the links below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.